Hey guys, welcome back to the series of videos on static timing analysis concepts. And in this video, we will try to understand timing paths, path groups, and timing path terminologies. So without wasting time, let's get started. So let's understand what is timing path first. In digital design, the data travels from input port to output ports of the design through series of sequential or combinational elements. Let's consider this figure over here. This gives and shows multiple paths possible. If you can see over here, this is a D flip flop and another D flip flop over here. And these are the inputs and this is the clock and this is the output. So there are multiple paths in it. If a path contains timing arcs, then only we can say it as a timing path actually. So a timing path in a design can be considered as a collection of paths or timing arcs. We will understand this in more detail. So in STA, paths are timed based on valid start points and valid end points, which means to say that all paths which you can see over here cannot be actually considered as a timing path for example let's say i take this output q of this deep flip flop can i say that path from this output q to uh, for example this input of another flip flop from here to here a timing path actually not that's because there are few valid start points and valid end points defined over here so we need to ensure that which is and we need to understand which are the valid start points and end points, right? So valid start point can be either an input port or the clock pin of the synchronous devices. It cannot be anything else. This is because you see that the clock is the one which actually launches the data from input to the output. It is not actually related to the input pin of the T flip flop. It is basically the, the control of this device is basically the clock. So the clock pin is actually the start point of the data travel, right? And let's see what are the endpoints, which are the valid endpoints. It, it, it has to be either an output port or the data input pin of the synchronous elements. So the data input pin is this one right it, it has to be the data input pin of the synchronous element or it can be the output port which is uh, output port of the design itself so both of those can be valid so if you are asked what are the path group it has to be totally four right so let's understand which are the types of timing paths or path groups one of that is from an input port to an output port which is some, it, it is not showed here. I will show it in another figure. A path can be directly from input port to output port without having any logic that is also possible or with having some combinational logic where there has to be a timing constraint defined, but there are no sequential elements in it. So that path is treated as direct connection from input port to output port and it's also called as default paths in some cases some people or some tools call it default paths so these default paths include uh, these direct connections from input to output so it is called as basically feed through uh, you might have heard of it if you haven't uh, it's not that important but feed throughs are direct connections from input to output that is one type of default path and the other asynchronous paths uh, and uh, combinational logics are all grouped into this uh, default paths no sequential elements are allowed in this path so next is the input port to uh, the flip-flop and this flip-flop when i say it can be a register a normal register or it can be a, a flip-flop of the or any other uh, logic in the memory right the input of the memory so if you consider this is called as actually uh, into reg path so next path is basically the flip-flop to flip-flop or called as reg to reg right and next is basically the flip-flop to the output port 
or let's to out path so we will see all these paths uh, in this figure over here so if you consider this this path is basically which you can see over here uh, which goes through this combinational logic and this combinational logic and this combinational logic if you consider this path this path is basically uh, asynchronous path this doesn't have any synchronous elements or sequential elements in it so this will be a default path or input port to output port path right this is actually not a feed through as such but um, it can be considered as a combinational logic path so next is basically um, your uh, input port to the flip-flop path right this is the input of the flip-flop so this is a valid uh, endpoint and this is a valid start point and input port and next is um, a flip-flop to a flip-flop or reg to reg path so reg to reg path always starts from the input of the clock uh, input clock pin of the uh, flip-flop and ends at the input uh, uh, data pin of the uh, capture flip-flop okay and next is basically the clock pin to the output port so these are the four possible timing groups or timing paths so now we will understand uh, different terminologies used for uh, the path timing path basically first is slack are also called as margin if you consider this figure we will have timing associated with any path for example what i meant is let's say i launch the data from the launch flip-flop over here this is called as launch flip-flop because the data will be launched from here and this is called as a capture flip-flop because the data will be captured over here also the path which goes from here to here where this is the data travel path right so it is called as a data path and this is basically where the clock um, uh, travels uh, travels so it is called as uh, clock path basically or it, it's also called as capture path and this is called as launch path both are all those terminologies can be used and we need to adjust to those terminologies so keep remembering that so let's say the data is launched at zero uh, second zero picosecond and now uh, our requirement for example over here and how this requirement comes from it basically comes from uh, our specification of the chip itself for example we say that we are designing a chip for 2.5 gigahertz what do we mean by that it means that the delay from uh, input port to output port is actually defined that you give some data to your chip and it makes computation and results it gives the result in that period of time it has to execute so many instructions in that period of time or if it's an asic it has to do that much computation uh, in that period of time so with that definition we will have limitations for time so we need to understand that uh, from here to here we have a budget allocated that means uh, from here to here it has to take that uh, some time we we expect the data to reach from here to here within some time and we will say that is five picoseconds which is also called as this is actually called as required arrival time but some people call it required time uh, that's the most used but i would prefer to say it as required arrival time because we need we want the signal or the data to arrive to this point at five picosecond at this time right so that's why it's called as required arrival time or required time but what could happen it may come early or it, it may come late what if it's early no problem at all however early it is we don't have any problem but what if it's late oh that's not good because that would result into our specification our specification goes bad right so we have to say that um, if actual arrival time what is how what, what how is it reaching when is it reaching at this point that is called as actual arrival time uh, if it is seven if seven picoseconds which is actually more than five picoseconds then we are violating our timing our timing is not converged properly so uh, 
so we need to give some term for this uh, difference and how are we how much are we uh, violating we are violating two picoseconds that difference between the required arrival time and actual arrival time is also called as a slack or this the, the term margin you can say the term margin uh, in fact says it's a difference right so by how much are we um, losing or violating our uh, rule so that's basically two picoseconds so it's also called as slack or margin but remember that it's always the difference between required arrival time and actual arrival time so it it, it, it is always rat or rt minus at it's not at minus rt that's very important because always we say positive slack is good right so the difference between a required time and a uh, required time or required arrival time and actual time or actual arrival time is called as slack or margin so it's you need to remember that slack is basically rt minus at it's not at minus rt so what if it is positive it's always good um, what if it is negative it's not good our timing is not m met actually if it is negative that negative slack means the timing is violated by that amount for example two picoseconds here over here it is minus two picoseconds if you if you calculate slack it is minus two right so minus two it's it's uh, violating by two picoseconds that's what it means if it is positive um no problem it's better right so uh, you can ask uh, what if it's too positive let's say 200 uh, plus 200 slack is plus 200 what do we do um, is it of some use or something obviously it is um, not that great because some very few parts have that that much of uh, positive slack so it's not of great use because you cannot actually increase the specification let's say you had designed it for 2.5 gigahertz can you increase it to 3 gigahertz actually not because most of your design is converged to this 2.5 but some parts are more for which what you can do you can do some other optimizations for example uh, if if a path has too much positive slack then we can go for uh, some some other techniques called area optimization you can reduce the area so let's go to the next terminology which is critical path so what is a critical path when in timing um, analysis basically we always care for this path which is critical path so when you let's say you give a timing run okay now you have 20,000 parts as I said earlier let's say 20,000 parts are there and now you will get a timing report saying these um, parts having this much and you will have a timing report where how many uh, you will have some terminologies like WNS TNS um, and also what is worst negative slack and what is total negative slack and all those or and number of violating endpoints basically so or number of failing paths right so those details will be there uh, <clears throat> worst negative slack is basically uh, I, I can explain it in some other video worst negative slack is basically the uh, the worst or the highest uh, negative slack which is there in the design so if there is a path which is violating by minus 500 something like that right and no, no path is having greater negative slack than that so it's called as worst negative slack and that path is basically a critical path so if you can see over here a timing path that fails to meet the timing constraint by largest margin in a design is called critical path okay so you can say uh, what if every every path meets you know, we are saying here uh, if a timing path uh, that fails right what if it all the paths meet the timing so if all the paths are meeting the constraint then the path that is closest almost there to fail right that path is uh, basically the critical path 
so it is about to fail whatever you can say so the timing is, for that path is the worst compared to all the other paths that is called as uh, critical paths it, uh, we, are, we are seeing as one path but it could be multiple paths right simultaneously it could be multiple paths which are uh, failing so critical path actually determines the maximum frequency of operation of the design this is what i was telling you uh, about when we when it is 2.5 gigahertz and some other uh, paths are having uh, 100 or 200 500 plus 500 slack what can we do can we increase the that 2.5 gigahertz to 3 gigahertz no not possible why because some other path is failing timing or it is it is having criticality we cannot do anything for this path this path is very important however let's say you have a very high positive slack for this path then obviously you can increase the specification to some other if to, if it is 2.5 gigahertz then you have some uh, very high improvement very high slack over there you can increase your timing uh, to much higher your uh, clock frequency to much higher uh, number and that makes it a much much better and high performance device i hope you got some clarity on what is timing paths and what are different types of timing paths and uh, some terminologies related to the timing path that's all for now i will see you in the next video thanks a lot for watching and if you liked my videos and you want to contribute there is a super thanks enabled uh, down there uh, you can give your contribution if you would like to um, thanks a lot and bye-bye